Hi guys, welcome to this week's episode of The Messy Draw. Um, in the draw today, we're talking about stand culture and cancel culture and kind of how toxic it can be. Um, yeah, so we'll start off. Has anyone ever stand anyone in the... We all know Sharon stands pod, uh, Beyonce. Like, we all know it. Um, so Sharon, talk a bit about how it's like being part of like uh-huh. the fan base. I don't, um, okay, I do love Beyonce, I do, but I've loved her for, I've loved her for a long time before stan culture was a thing, so yeah. I just kind of got put into it just because I've loved her all, all my life, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the reason I love Beyonce is not the reason other people love Beyonce, so that's why I don't really see myself as a stan. Oh, I, do like, I, don't, I don't see her as the other fans do, like she is this person that, that never does any wrong. To me, I love her because of how she makes me feel. Yeah. You know, how her music makes me feel. How yeah. she makes me feel as a woman, as a black woman. She's a really That's good cool. advocate for black women. The stuff she yeah. does for you guys. And she gets slated on the internet, absolutely slated. Anytime she listens to anything, it's all the internet will talk about. And but the more people love you, the more people are going to hate you. Yeah, the Beehive is one of the most dangerous stand groups that there can be. Honestly, remember when they were trying to kill that poor woman, Rachel, whatever her last name was, when she had nothing to do with Jay Z. That that's an example of a of a toxic stand group. No, I don't get like, involved in anything. I think that every scary toxic stand group. I'm not yet. No, every single celebrity who has like fan base has toxic fans yeah. because some people don't know when to chill, but that instance was so scary like in terms of this woman was fearing for her life for simply talking to Beyonce's husband um she was never back here with the good hair in the end yeah yeah like love them and love the art and love the message that they put out love them for whatever reason but to be involved and wanting to know what's going on in their lives and thinking you're entitled to know who they're dating or when they're pregnant like with Meghan Markle when they wanted to know like what baby she's having, I think that's no one's business but their own. It has to be a line. But some some like but some fans are like get really over involved. But that but you use the right word, entitled. Loads of fans feel entitled to every single last detail of loads of celebrities' lives. Um and like uh Gunjun said, they are entitled to that person's life and so them being a stand doesn't only hurt other people who criticize this artist, but it also deeply hurts the artist and there's been many times when artists had to come around telling their fans to chill yeah they're yeah. damaging to the person they claim to love just as much as everyone else yeah um one toxic not only toxic one fan base that i'm terrified of like definitely scared of are k-pop stands you never mess with k-pop stands they will find out where you live dox your address and that's it and as an ex-k-pop fan i can say that because growing up i went through this whole k-pop phase but they are scary like during the bml movements um they absolutely crashed the police the police app with like fan cams from their favorite people but like, yeah yeah like they, they they did a good job but they're scary I, would, I, would again, most, I feel like most K-pop fans are like young girls, no? Uh, and I feel yeah. like young people, they take it a bit too far. Indeed. Somali boys love K-pop. Somali, not boys, Somali girls love K-pop. Yeah, I've seen that. And I remember when they were doing their concert in Ramadan, Somali girls were furious. And as um, Sharon said, um, their next concert, I think they like planned around it to make sure that it, if it's... Um, their fans schedule which i thought was really good <laughs> oh, yes, they make things happen they're your fans they're the ones that they're, yeah, they're they're the ones favorite. but i wanted to say one thing yeah i was watching that show and she was in love with this group i forgot what they're called boys in motion and i feel like back in the day when girls used to die over by boy bands it wasn't seen negative or toxic, but now people who are dying over, well, there isn't really a boy band, but let's say One Direction, it's seen as toxic and 
negative and it's like the internet what's the that internet, it's a problem the internet it's evolved so much to the point now right now when you like when you like a, a group you can find out everything about them from the hospital they were born in to where their mum went to university you can find out where they live but you, it could, you know i promise you i grew up with an older cousin and my older sister and they were in love with this all these boy bands and they had posters and yeah posters and so i was gonna marry one of us uh, yeah. life we were in love but we didn't have the internet to scrutinize us and yeah. i think with both fan culture and cancel culture what is making it way worse than it actually is is the internet because it's really not anything different when i watch all these things like all these programs from back in the day it's always that one teenage girl in love with his boy bands and it's the same thing we, we, we love bands. We, we love I, I just, Sorry, yeah. The, the internet has made it so much more... Like, because I was a K-pop fan, and I don't know, I when I look back at it, I'm like, oh my god, I was so obsessed. Like, that wasn't healthy. Is there it's anything really... wrong with it? Is there anything wrong with it? That makes you grow out of it. No, but if that makes you happy, if I know... Beyonce, listening to Beyonce makes me happy, is you're you, like you're not you're not you don't consider yourself a stan you're not fully obsessed if you're fully obsessed with a, with a, a group or something or a person yeah because too much of anything is too much true but i feel like if what if what if i was a stan though is there anything wrong with it is that what we're saying i don't know you can, i definitely think you can be a stan and it can be from a healthy sort of come from a healthy place because you support them so much but I think there is a, there is a line and often in this digital digital day and age that line does get crossed like when you when yeah. you find out when you see a, 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 someone that you like with a girl and you find out where that girl lives and that happens a lot so you're saying it becomes a problem when it becomes stalkish yeah but otherwise there's nothing wrong with it because this this people <laughs> a lot to this to this someone I be, I think when we were younger and we used to MTV was the source to get your music from <laughs> and uh, when me and my cousins when we watch something and an artist that we haven't seen before pops up right someone would have to claim the artist right there and then and no one else was allowed to enjoy it <laughs> and I think that was our form of standing and no one's allowed to like they were yours. And if anyone else liked that song, you were like, who the hell are you? This is mine. We cl literally claimed ownership of these people who watch it on TV. But like people, although like stand culture can be toxic, I guess, at the same time, these that's what these celebrities are making money off. The pre-orders of their albums, the concerts, the VIP experiences, people bu buying their merch, all of that comes from people who are yeah. involved more in the stand culture so actually although although it's toxic they create that environment to profit off of it yeah i just want you guys to answer because i don't believe it's toxic i mean unless you're crossing the, the line of talking what why is it toxic to love someone that you that you don't know when you cross boundaries like when a fan starts to like find out where you live or when a fan tries to follow you back to your hotel after a concert or well, when, you know. yeah that is going too far but let's say it's someone who is as soon as but as soon as someone says something negative about them they suddenly get really aggressive about it let me tell you why because that person gives them happiness that person is because there's people who like it's like when i hear some people speak about certain rappers and they're like Kendrick Lamar, when I was depressed, he's the one that got me out of this depression. So obviously he's gonna mean something to you. So when you hear someone say something negative about him, you, you they violently attack. The attack is not normal. Uh, I, if you are, if you have the balls, go on Twitter and say Nipsey Hussle was trash. I kid you not, you will see what cyberbullying is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm on the fence. I'm, I'm on the fence. I think it becomes for, uh, toxic from liking an artist, even loving an artist, to toxic when people start bullying people that they don't know on the internet for somebody they don't know. I think I think you can stick up for your artist. 
without attacking someone else. But they attack people. But I feel like the healthy stands don't don't say anything on the internet. It's always the unhealthy ones that pipe up. Because the healthy ones are like, okay, she doesn't she doesn't like Beyonce. That's her music taste. Yeah. But yeah. you say it and all the ones that attack you, they're all the unhealthy ones. So I feel like on the internet you only have experience with the unhealthy stands because the healthy ones don't give a crap if you don't like your favourite. And the more unhealthy stands you have, the more people dislike you to piss off your unhealthy stands. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what it is with certain celebrities. I think certain celebrities get hit because of their fan group. A hundred percent. I think like the reason why like K pop is like so like kind of ridiculed is because they're fans do go a, a, a very over the top to the point where like but do, they're but disrespectful. Do you the same thing with football fans everyone knows hooligans no one likes hooligans they're scary you keep away from them they are mm -hmm. violent people violent yeah if you try if you wear it was a different t-shirt on their side that that you're gone right you will so many yeah. of them are racist and hide behind um icons yet they love like the black footballers that are doing it for them. They love the Muslim footballers that are scoring the goal. I know nothing about football, by the way, but they love the Muslim followers that are getting them goals. But they only like them when they're doing something right. They do one thing wrong and they're hoo ha ha -ing like a monkey. <laughs> oh, Lord. Throwing bananas. Okay, let's talk about cancel culture because Kelly Rowland tweeted the other day, right, about it last week on thursday and she was like yeah well thank god god never cancelled me you lot need to stop judging other people so much because she, she was basically just talking about how when you cancel people it's your you're not criticizing them you're punishing them basically you're basically telling them you're done you need to be removed and interestingly enough i saw a lot of people get a lot of a lot of um influencers weren't commenting or putting enough out there on Black Lives Matters and a lot of people turned around and attacked a lot of them about it and were like why are you not putting a, um, you know the blank image why are you not putting that on your profile they were getting like ridiculous hate for it why, uh, why are you not putting out links for donations why are you not doing your part this that which understandably when you follow someone you want them to live up to what you have in your head and the ideals of what you expect them to be and Sorry, go on. You were going to say something. No, the, the thing about things like Black Lives Matter, I feel like if you're in a place of influence and you, you've got so many followers and we're living in this time where we need to raise awareness for what's going on in the world, I think it is, whether you've signed up for it or not, I think it's your responsibility. I know, I agree it's your responsibility. What's famous Desmond Tutu, is it Desmond Tutu? Where it goes, if you're silent I think in the face of oppression, then you're on the oppressive side something like that i think that applies here yeah you're seeing all this evil down in the world you have a platform of, of a million plus followers and you don't say anything you uh, don't I do think, um like with um council culture well I, I, I wouldn't say council culture is toxic honestly it, it can be at times like everything else severely like poison but i think when someone does something wrong it is people holding you accountable and because of the age of the internet there are a lot more people holding you accountable when you do something wrong what was it r kelly we all held him accountable um uh, what is the other uh, bill cosby when you do something wrong people are holding you accountable and i think it's a good thing not just celebrities people cancel their family and friends when your family or friend does something that you don't necessarily agree with you cut ties with them because you don't agree with what they did you're holding them accountable and whatever bullshit apology they throw you away is not good enough there's a place of not making any errors you have to be perfect the humanity is being taken away like no one is allowed to make an error you're it's not allowed to make when you were 14 the surface yeah you are being held accountable the you that you are right now not 14 year old child you know, I want people to grow and people do grow and people do change and people learn we always talk about how we're not the same person we was a year ago but now mm -hmm. you want to hold someone accountable for something they tweeted five ten years ago yes it was to yes it was absolutely damaging and it was absolutely out of order but i believe people do, do change and people can educate themselves and a lot of things that were acceptable five years ago are not acceptable now. 
So we can't, can we really hold someone accountable for? Um, we are expecting people, we are judging people on today's norms and yeah. values of today on what they did years ago. And um, what's his name? Um, Blake Lively. Is it Blake Lively? Serena from Gossip Girl. Yeah, and her husband are being held accountable for getting married in plantation. Yeah. Which in there, what he said was, and we don't know, we can only hear what he's telling us. And he said, well, on a slave a plantation, a slave plantation. Like on the land of a plantation, okay. Yeah. And he was like, we saw a photo on Pinterest. When you see somewhere, you're like, who researches was this place people killed in here? No people way. have said, though, quickly, people have said on the website, it does say, though. Does it? Oh, well, in that case, I have no d defense for him. <laughs> um, what was your original defense? Your parents were there, they, they didn't know. They definitely yeah, knew. If someone doesn't know something and you make a mistake and you're being held because of that error you made, yes, maybe you were a bit naive. Maybe you didn't do as much research as you should have. Maybe you let your privilege get in the way. And you, if you made the effort, you would have found out. But you didn't. But now you are very apologetic, very regretful. I think we should move on. I think. Like, yeah. But saying that, you know, is 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 there ever a time when cancer culture actually works? Like, I don't know. Let's look at let's, let's look at Shane Dawson. I'm I'm pretty sure they cancel, but I know that little snake will come back. I know. It depends who cancels you. Yeah, I think I think with people, people like Shane, is, people have tried to cancel him time and time again, and he always comes out with shitty excuses. No. Like, no, the people, people cancel. There we go. No, no, the, you go. People, the people cancelling. You can't. I can't cancel someone I never gave time to in the beginning. It's yeah. not going to work. The only way to cancel someone is if you was a fan of them in the to start mm -hmm. with. The mm -hmm. people who like Shane Dawson are not trying to cancel him. That's why he's still around. That Jeffrey Star would have been gone long time ago if everyone was like me. Let's, let's, the thing that bothers me about Jeffrey Star, sorry, the thing that bothers me about Jeffrey Star is he didn't just say the N word, I'm not condoning this, he didn't just say the N word when he was like 14 years old, because this man's in his 30s. He made comments like, I want to pour bleach on this, I don't know how to say it, to lighten her skin. That's not like him trying to say a word to look cool, that's integrated, deep rooted racism and colorism. It's disgusting. I don't know how you can forgive people like that. And the thing is, that, that video's been out for years. And, like, I think it's only recently that, that I've noticed some, like, white people have been cancelling him. I, I, I never saw, like, ethnic minorities supporting him. I didn't. Uh, but it's only recently I've seen that, like, they, they're being cancelled. So, I don't know. Ta ca Times have changed, yeah. that's what I'm saying. What was acceptable then, and, like, the tolerance we had then, is completely different right now. So that's why you're seeing more people speaking up and brands dropping his deals with him because people have had enough. I have a yeah. question. Go ahead. Is it easier to cancel a person or a brand? Brand. Pa a, a person. Okay, Grove, explain. I think a brand is... To me, a brand encompasses one thing. It's like, okay, it's, you know, it's L'Oreal Paris, it's this, it, it was in Boots, it's a bit upmarket, it's a bit for all the ladies. It's, it's just, it's, just it's, it's got like one idea, one concept. When you canceling a person, I feel like, okay, so for example, I stopped following someone on the internet called like Sheikh Beauty because during the BLM movement, she just made some quite like, some videos that basically I just think it just wasn't okay as she wasn't pointed out by me I was I didn't have even hadn't even seen her Instagram Sharon pointed her stories out to me and she was posting and she was dialing down a lot of the BLM movements and um, she didn't come across very apologetic basically when she spoke out about it later and so I stopped following her and although I've stopped following her a part of me thinks about Oh, I used to follow her because her kids were so cute and I used to follow her because I liked the way she did interior and I liked her makeup or I liked the way she dressed. So cancelling a whole person to me is a lot harder. Because there's more layers to them. Yeah, there's a lot more layers. Exactly. Well, the, brand, the brand you can go find 
something similar. Find an alternative, but when you cancel a person, you have to, it's hard to find someone there. It gives you the thing with brands though is like the only reason I think brands are harder to cancel is because of how like they're rooted in society in terms of so L'Oreal got rid of the this transgender um, spokesperson um, stuff like that and then during the BLM movement they tried to speak up a bit and then this no. transgender spoke up and said well actually you treated me like crap back in the day so this is a performative. So people are like, let's cancel L'Oreal. But L'Oreal actually is owned by a massive company that, um, what do you call it, owns other companies. So you might not shop in L'Oreal anymore, but you're shopping in another company that they own. Therefore, you're still giving money to the people that own L'Oreal. It's like you can't win with, with them. You, 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 can, you can stop using them, but you're still giving money towards them. That's what really bugs me about a lot of companies. I think... We can all say, we all know a person who's been cancelled, like completely cancelled, but a brand that has been 100%, I've cancelled some brands, and I don't know if I can call it cancelled, I try not to buy anything to do with Nivea. What do they do? Oh, they're selling bleach to women in Africa, and when asked why are you doing this, they oh. said there was, a there, there was a demand for it, and they were supplying, and they didn't see anything wrong with it. I've not been in H&M since that. Cool. Monkey. Cheeky yeah. monkey. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly, do you remember when brands sat down and they said, how do we offend black people? And every week there was a new one. It was every week. And that was the marketing strategy at that time. And I really think people need to actually stand the ground, especially celebrities. And that's why we're putting a lot of pressure on celebrities because you've got this huge following. How, how does it look like for H&M to put out such an advert and then the next day someone as big as Beyonce is shopping in H&M. You're gonna, what are you doing? Yourself with that brand and then you're therefore associating yourself with the things they do and you're saying it's okay. Yeah. If people, I think now people are being a lot more conscious than they were before of the brands and the people they're associating themselves with because it speaks about you. Yeah. So what are you, why are you interested in someone who, yeah exactly why are you interested in a brand that does that are you supporting that do you think it's okay are you condoning it anything wrong with it this is this is my only problem with cancel culture um someone like nella rose who had her tweets were dug up her problematic tweets she about, came from Somali people i can't say about somalia i'm gonna leave that one alone but talking about dark-skinned women da, da, da. my issue is when black people dig up black people problematic tweets about being dark skin and they try to cancel them. I have an issue with that personally because these dark skinned women were made to feel like they're ugly and everything about their skin is ugly. And so, yeah, I mean, they should have known better than to tweet that, but to try to cancel them for the things they were made to believe growing up and now you're trying to cancel them, it's My like, talk. yeah, it's like we all know the kind of world who was living in back in 2011 12 13 like they've obviously grown out of it now they love themselves give them a chance they're, they're not that person they were anymore they obviously didn't see themselves as beautiful because the world did not allow them to see themselves 2012 was a dark time for dark skinned women yeah and what? then now you're even giving them a harder time for apparently how could you see dark skin like this it's like well because the world forced me to look like this and people who look like me like this so i think cancel culture is nah we talk about people's mental health all the time da, da, da. but when we are collectively dragging people through the mud on twitter no one is thinking about anyone's mental health and i think that is the problem we all make mistakes and i think we should think about that but as I said, it's only a couple of weeks. We all forget it and people come back to the... Something new comes along. Yeah. You just have to be strong enough for three weeks if you get cancelled, is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, now um, we've only got 10 minutes left. So I want to leave on a light note. Um, so this is on, the, on, on the topic of celebrities, is there like one celebrity that you just you dislike for, for, for no good reason you'd happily see them cancelled? Multiple. <laughs> Wait, name one. Do you like them? 
you literally there, there's not really even a good reason you don't like them but you'd happily see them get cancelled amy what's her last name that very unfunny comedian woman amy amy schumer <laughs> I don't know if I just Someone from Girls, what's her name? Lana Denham. Those two women can get cancelled at any moment, and I'm sorry if that's bullying. <laughs> no, I don't know how I feel strongly about anyone like that, to be honest. No. You're not getting cancelled, but celebrity you don't like for no good reason. Yeah, there's a couple that I don't like for no. Mm, I like, mm, I've, I've tried to train myself into. If, if it's not, not, not for me, you know? Everyone I don't like is for a reason. I don't like Pretty Patel, there I said it. Who likes her though? Who does? <laughs> that's, a, that's a big thing to say. Why don't you like Pretty Patel? Interesting. She it's comes on TV and a spirit comes onto me and not kind spirit. Yeah, the big when I see the woman's face. I just feel like the entire good energy gets sucked out of me. The person who I think should be cancelled is Priyanka Chopra. She is disgusting. She is vile, and she's a UN ambassador. How does that work out? How how are you a woman, bro, and you're a UN ambassador? Why do you think she should be cancelled? Because she's a warmonger. She's happy, like she, in the name of patri, I can't pronounce the word patriotism. I can't say it. Patriot. She was happy to see innocent people like killed because that's what her president or prime minister, whatever it's called, was happy to. That's disgusting. And then you're a UN ambassador. That doesn't make sense. And on top of that, when a woman was trying to calmly debate with her, she was like, shut up, I've heard enough. I don't want to hear you. Oh, I remember she, that. I remember that. And she called the woman out, which is a quite bullying form. It was. Yeah. I absolutely despise her. And Nick Jonas is a little bitch for marrying her. I said it. But one more thing I want to add. I feel like also on Twitter, we're like, we've, we've grown away um, on having difference in opinions. Like, if I have a different opinion to someone else, I'm completely if yeah. it's not a popular opinion god they're gonna come for you yeah uh, you're not allowed to have an opinion on twitter anymore you're not allowed to have an opinion if it's not gonna be what yeah happens. when i know opinion is too much i'm like okay let me not tweet that let me just not. also we all follow like sharon and i most people we follow is black twitter arifa you follow mostly asian twitter so we are surrounded by people who have similar ideas and we we're working up to the reality at the general election because we thought we had it in the bag. Everyone I was reading, everything was my people. And then, well, <laughs> I think because we follow people who have the same ideas, same thought process, mm -hmm. same cultural backgrounds, there is no room for wiggle. And yeah, I and mean, maybe we should broaden our understanding it's of 100%. people. You can't. That's like, I don't just follow Asian Twitter. I follow people from like, all sorts of places like I follow anime Twitter, K-pop Twitter, all that sort of stuff and that, what that is is you follow like-minded people because that's whose content you're going to enjoy. I don't want to follow like someone whose entire like a, opinion on politi politics votes against me and my existence in this country. Yeah. You're going to follow people that are like-minded. But I think but, what it does is when you only follow people who think just like you do or are in the same sort of thinking it creates an environment where you think okay well this is the world now and this yeah. is what everybody in the world is thinking and actually there's a whole other community out there that hates immigrants in the world in the country sorry and wants you to get rid of it just how intolerant the people it was like brexit it was like no way that's gonna happen there's no everyone i know was voting no but obviously there's a whole there's a whole three half of more than half of the country out there that fucking believes otherwise but we didn't know that because we weren't following those sort of threads and instead also, we were really comfortable i don't also feel like how, how, how truthful are like are people tweeting just to get retweets are people actually saying what they mean i don't know it's all the same it's all the same. i think also like we follow a lot of people the same age and i feel like generations think obviously that there are people are different but generations think kind of similar so like I, every single young person that i know voted to say every single young person that i know voted labor right but you speak to a boomer complete different story and the internet yeah. predominant the, the most people on it are younger people so millennials and well, going yeah. back to cancel culture 
do you think, I just had a deja vu, um, being cancelled have something to do with your race? Because Katie Hopkins has been down our throat for God knows how long, and she's still down. No one cancels her. Whereas um, Wally, as problematic and as horrible, and he deserved his cancel and everything confiscated, he got dealt with in a heartbeat. Well, it depends who you're offending, Najma. <laughs> And if you've got friends who can pull you back out, yeah. It when you're white, you have more friends in high places. You have more friends in higher places. Yeah. So it depends who you are. You can get away with it. Oh, you can offend black people, gay people, trans people. Just don't offend a marginalized community, and you'll be well. Yeah, and you'll be fine. Don't offend the rich white man. Don't, offend the rich white man. don't oh. do that. Because when you that, you 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 offend everyone who's at the top. Of the corner Not that you should offend the rich white man to begin with. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. But if, if if a white man is gonna possibly be offended, you're done. You know mm. that you are actually cancelled from the top. Oh, to get cancelled, it depends on who you're offending and who you are. Yeah. Yeah, and because I feel like we get offended. People are cruel to us all the time, and nobody's getting bloody cancelled. We cancel yeah. them for a week and they're back again. Guys, yeah, if you're just uh, married to someone or dating someone who later on came out with problematic tweets, would you defend them? I would never defend them. No, 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 seriously, no. <laughs> someone you're married to, possibly. I'm just saying, would I defend my partner? No, but because you know, like, he does not hold the view anymore. Problematic. Do not. I, I don't think you sit here down and be like, where did this come from? Like. Because clearly, because clearly the person I'm with right now does not feel this way. Where did those feelings that resurface? Where did those come from? And but, have you actually evolved from that? But, but would, men would leave you to believe. Do not defend them. Do not. Um, I remember this Twitter thing. Um, yeah, this boy, he, his um, tweets resurfaced of him being vile to black women. And his girlfriend came out, defended him to the teeth, saying that is not him, blah, 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 laid her business on the timeline for evidence to be shown <laughs> that's what i'm saying like if, if that was happened to me and tweet from 10 years came out and they were like racist homophobic i would never defend them he did wrong he deserves like people to be like what the hell no but i would speak to him at home and make sure that he would you evolved you and changed yeah would you try to speak like him at home if he hadn't changed then i don't know if i could be with him because i don't want to be with a hateful person but well, if that's, I genuinely, the person you're with isn't like that anymore. I imagine that if someone, like, if someone, if that happened and my partner would be like really but, racist, homophobic, I'd be like, you're still not like this. Let's I'm make so your boyfriend, we're making it personal. So let's say I'm dating, I don't know, Asian man or a white man, and I'll find out later he's tweeted something about black girls are too loud, they've got attitude out, you'll never see me with a black girl. And he's with you. We're making it personal. Like, what do you do? He said this three and a half years ago. He tweeted something like this. Yeah. What are you going to do? Three and a half is a bit recent, you know. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Say, he, say he was eighteen. Say he was eighteen. That's like six years six ago. Six years ago. Yeah. So say that was six years ago. He was eighteen. He was fresh out, fresh out of six. What are you doing, Grandpa? What are you doing? If someone was an Asian girl's no, but that's what I already said what I would do. I said, uh, first of all, I'd have to evaluate if the person I'm with still f has these sort of emotions because like, like we said earlier with influencers and with celebrities, they've said something five, 10 years ago and they've evolved and the time in which they were, the time and the environment in which they were allowed that sort of comment and that sort of nature to be built. So if they've said something on Twitter or on Instagram, it's kind of like, okay, but where did that come from? Is that something that you still relate to in today's day and age? So first of all, I'd have to find out where that came from and how that sort of environment came to be for him to feel like, to feel that way. And then I'd have to see if he's evolved beyond that and if he can recognize how wrong of it, it how wrong of him it was to have felt that way. Like if he can recognize that he's evolved and he's moved on from what had happened. And yeah, I, I would like, I'd like a reason. I, I believe if that happened to me, 
I'd, everything Gunji did, I would do as well. But I think I could ask, why did he think like that? Was it something he was bought? Was his pa did parents instill that in him? And if, if that's the case, I no longer have a mother and father in law. Because what are the chances they've grown up? Because if they brought their child up thinking like that, there's a very slim chance that they've changed. Because people do get brought up in racist and homophobic households, and they do evolve as they get older. So are you saying you would cancel your mother-in-law and father-in-law for having... If I still think they have those ideas, yeah, because my kid's going to come out Asian or, or half Asian or whatever my child is. Am I going to let these racist people like, have contact with my child? Hell no. I mean, Obviously, I'll speak to my husband and make sure, like, I mean, and if... if percent, but I would even go further to say, I think everyone should be forgiven, right? I think we, honestly, we have to think forgiving culture but I'm not a very forgiving person never have been I don't love it about myself but it's just I personally wouldn't forgive that if I found out the person I'm dating uh, for me I would I would like to say I wouldn't get into a relationship with someone who has had those ideas in the first place because when I'm getting to know to you I want to know who you are and if you once had such ideas things will pop up do you know what? It's very hard to burn. Oh, such I would have this die hard, bro. I'm cutting that shit off. I get it. I don't know. Like, I was brought up in a, in a very homophobic household, but I don't believe in anything. I don't believe in any of that anymore. So, you, I do think people can change. I do believe people change, but personally, I, I know that, but I, I would excuse myself. Good for you if you have changed, but yeah. it just it, I won't be there because I can't take the chances such things resurfacing. No. Personally, and I'm if not. I'm trying to have children with you, as you said, whatever the hell that installed those ideas in you, I don't want them anyway. So yes, we should forgive people. But it's, it's easier to forgive if it's not a personal attack. As horrible as this comes across, is, if my I found out my boyfriend or whatever was saying Asian people are horrible, blah, 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 I might find it easier to forgive because that wasn't a direct attack. Whereas um, a, you guys, exactly. do you see what I mean? I know exactly where because because it, it's not directly related to you. Exactly, it, 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 it in the future. It doesn't actually. It doesn't have a detrimental effect on you. It, it doesn't. So, have much. And as much as I would be very much against that, if he did it in front of me, it would be end of us. No matter how long we have to get, been together, how much I love him, if he said such things now, it would be done. But it would be if he told me that's who I used to be or such ideas were surface, I would be inclined to forgive it. Then it's not personal. Yeah, it was a black person. Yeah, but if it's personal, that's straight. I know where you're coming from. Ending the relationship. I don't care how much you've changed. I don't care how many petitions you've signed for Black Lives Matter. I don't care how many African countries you've been to. I really don't care. No, thank you. Because from then on onwards, all I'm going to say is like... Racist. <laughs> you would want me to love you. To <laughs> see you the way I used to. Yeah. Right, on that note guys, that's been um, cancel culture, stand culture, let's learn to forgive, yeah? <laughs> forgive you know, it's up to you. Me, like getting very odd forgives. Yeah, only good, well, <laughs> grow up. <laughs> We're not good. God forgives, but don't forgive any bullshit thrown you away. If someone disrespects the cancel right there and then. Yeah, it's up to you really. If you feel uncomfortable with it, if you can't be with this person anymore, it's up to you. Do you? It is what it is. Love yourself. Love everyone. And it's not don't only be cancel, but don't be scared to forgive either. Yeah. Yeah. People yeah. learn. Let's give people a chance to grow and learn from their mistakes. And yeah. we're not well, perfect. To judge, you wouldn't give us the ability to judge his creations. We're not perfect, okay? And don't be too hard on other people. We're all trying. We're all unlearning. We're not perfect. Perfect. I can stand for that. We're all unlearning, okay? People, because they said something bad about your favourite artist. <laughs> Honestly, it's not that deep. They don't know you. It's it's right, guys. Until next week, stay messy. Bye. Stay messy. Bye. Bye.